Channel 20 in Sault Ste. Marie, Channel 19 in Toronto. Saturn and its rings. This is how the artists and animators visualized a spacecraft coming into Saturn's space when this adventure was filmed in 1975. And they assumed a clear, airless surface on Titan with the station underground. And contact has been made. John Lomberg, who's with me here today, was out at Jet Propulsion Labs in California when Voyager 1 did its flyby of Saturn and its moons. And you brought some pictures back, didn't you? Voyager sent us tens of thousands of pictures back of Saturn, its rings, and its moons. Uh, I have some of them here. But even before they got to the Saturn system, scientists had a pretty good idea of exactly where they would be and what they were looking for. Jim Blinn and Charlie Colhays, two computer graphics people at JPL, made a film to show what Voyager would see how it would look at the different satellites of Saturn and the timetable which was very carefully prepared of exactly when each of these thousands of pictures would be taken and what it would look for. Of course they didn't know what the surfaces of the moons in particular would be like so an artist had to invent surfaces but now we know what the real things look like. Were any of them made of cheese John? No but a lot of them are full of holes like our moon is full of holes. And I gotta ask the other question. Did the rings sound out loud? They didn't sound out loud, but they looked like the surface of a phonograph record. Instead of being broad, smooth, flat rings, they turned out to be thousands of ringlets, almost like you took a close-up view of the surface of a phonograph record. You mean it could be like a celestial rock group playing the music of the spheres? The music of the spheres. <laughs> yeah. John, the pictures you brought back it seems to me if you arrange them the right way, you could get almost the same sequence that we saw before of coming in through Saturn's space and down onto the surface of Titan. They made a uh, composite image of the different satellites of Saturn, almost as if you were approaching Saturn's space. And you can see that most of the moons have a look similar to our moon, that is, they're heavily cratered, except they're made of ice rather than rock. Except for Titan. Titan is really a different one. You can't see anything of the surface of Titan. It looks like a smooth, featureless ball because it's all cloud. But some specially processed photographs can show that this cloud is a very thick atmosphere that's in haze layers, indefinite stratified layers above the surface of the planet. And it's the atmosphere of Titan that makes it maybe the most interesting moon in the solar system. Well, uh... That atmosphere thing, th this picture, um, you know, all us old science fiction writers always said there was an atmosphere around Titan. And we assumed that Titan was the place where you would get the, the real sort of uh, uh, seething soup of life creation happening in a methane and nitrogen atmosphere and so forth. And we were pretty close to right, eh? Well, most good science fiction writers keep up on their astronomy. And astronomers knew that Titan had an atmosphere since the 30s. But they didn't know how much, and they didn't know how warm it was. And one of the startling findings of Voyager was that it was thicker. The atmosphere of Titan is thicker than anybody had in their wildest dreams thought. The pressure at the surface of Titan is about three times the pressure in this room. That's important because a thick, high-pressure atmosphere can both keep the surface warmer than it would otherwise be so far from the sun by a kind of greenhouse effect, kind of a, like a blanket mm -hmm. holding in the heat. It's and like in the ocean. It, it would in be way, like yeah. at the pressure at about 90 feet in the ocean. Mm -hmm. And the high pressure can also allow liquids to exist. On a planet like Mars, the pressure is so low that water would just boil away. On Titan, there can't be water, it's too cold. But the high pressure can mean that the surface is covered with liquid nitrogen, liquid ammonia, lakes of liquid ammonia, kind of like a a swamp with a, a swamp of liquid ammonia and a murk of clouds of liquid nitrogen droplets. What kind of temperature are you talking about uh, <clears throat> on Titan, on the surface of Titan? It's still very cold by our standards, hundreds of degrees below zero, 
but uh, about 90 degrees Kelvin. Uh -huh. What's that, about 200? It's 90 zero. degrees above absolute yeah. zero, put it that way, which is still very cold, but uh, the high pressure means that l there are some liquids that can exist at that temperature, cryogenic liquids like uh -huh. liquid nitrogen. But the interesting thing is that the atmosphere can produce organic molecules. That is, when sunlight shines into that atmosphere, it creates... Sunlight and nitrogen. Yeah. yeah it <laughs> creates the, the complicated molecules that on Earth led to the formation of life. Mm -hmm. And they've been raining down onto the surface of Titan into these lakes of liquid nitrogen and ammonia for billions of years. So who knows what could be going on in those lakes? Life. Maybe. <laughs>